That's why I started this IG. Well, the question is this, Shivani. Over the last month, which uh, variations or protocols of urine therapy have you been using or practicing? Okay, hold on. Hold on. I really want to answer you. It's saying this meeting is being recorded by the host. Yeah, that's me. We're recording this now because this everything we're saying from here on out is going to be valuable. Okay, I don't care. Um, what did you, did you say? Over the 30 years, hello, 30 days that you've been doing urine therapy, what protocols are you practicing other than oral consumption and what has your experience been? Um, I've been... I'm a Shiva devotee, so every morning I wake up and I worship the lingam at dawn, no matter if I went to bed at four or whatever time, I always have to do the dawn thing, and it's been for over 15 years, and um, I have a really close relationship with Lord Shiva, so I try to do it the right way. I try to put, I say the names that you're supposed to say, Bhairavav and Maheshwara and um, Rudra. Yeah. Did you understand my question about the, the other protocols, the topical protocols, like on the skin, in the nose, doing a foot soak? I haven't in the nose yet. And I was reading that some, or I saw somebody on YouTube say that they snorted the crystals of it. And I'm like, wow, like that sounds pretty wild. Like I will try that though in the next few months. I was well, trying to age some, but there's no crystals. So right. the crystals are going to come after a long period of drying. Oh, like after it all evaporates? Yeah, I mean, this, see, here's a 24 hour version right here. So the people who let it dry out in the sun or they put it in a really thin baking tray, they let it dry until it's powdered form and then they scrape it off and they call that Ormus Gold. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay, I want to put it on something flat. I have it. Just leave it in a windowsill by, in your house. In the sun, you're saying? In the sun. See, I can't brush my hair because um, my hands hurt all. So I put it on my hands because I have some pain in my hands. And I had this bump right here that you can't even barely see it now. We I was get, almost thinking about like, in, I have like some syringes. I don't do drugs. I hate drugs. I'm all organic. But I have some syringes from doing um, melanotan and growth hormone. <laughs> You're doing your some vanity some vanity stuff and so i was thinking about injecting it in there but now it's going away so i'm probably not going to do that but i've just been rubbing it on there and i rubbed some aged that i had that was aged for three days and aged for this is probably like a week and a half and so that's all besides drinking it in the morning all right well good um I'm you, new. <laughs> you, you know, you're a newbie you're what we call a newbie and yeah. you've got uh a long way to go on the journey and everything you can do other than just doing urine therapy, uh, like improving the quality of your diet, improving your physical exercise program and massage and your spiritual practice, you nailed it, and uh, positive mental attitude. Whatever you can do to bring all four pillars of health together will not only assure but accelerate the healing process. It's helping my circadian rhythm too because my 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 life went weird because I used to always get up at dawn and being in pain like that I would start to only feel good at like 6 p.m and then by midnight I would feel like almost a normal person so I would stay up till like 6 a.m it was crazy and then I would sleep in the morning it was insane so now my circadian rhythm's getting and I was always a sun gazer for like 30 years or more so um, I can I can stare at the sun when it's like up in the sky, like forever. And so I've been making sure I get outside before I before I started this. I couldn't even so that's like, a yes. take a walk. So that's a less. Yes, because Indira has a question here. Oh, sorry. I Indira, to, you, I, you're right. muted. <laughs> Indira, unmute yourself. And hopefully we don't have an echo effect. No, but I eat all organic though for 30 You years. know, you mentioned about this uh, little... Um, he was asking some question, Brother Sage. This this point, you know, like having a little bump. Yes. Yeah. What is that? A lot of people have that. So, what is the what is the reason? Well, good question. It could be inflammation. It could be like a tendonitis, or it could have been an old injury that's inflamed. Uh, but it's not a normal thing. But it can't. It's treatable. As far as it doesn't pain or anything, I think oh, mine, it hurts. you have to let it alone. Yeah, I would be soaking it in urine, uh, doing a compress, putting it in a washcloth, 
Um, all, over okay. your wrist, all over your wrist. Thanks. Have you ever moved toward injections? Now, some people are doing injections for shock, uh, knee pain. Uh, Dr. Group had talked about somebody who had knee pain, couldn't get any relief, didn't want to go get steroids or stem cell injections, and it dawned on them, there's trillions of stem cells in urine. So <laughs> they injected it somewhere under the kneecap. The pain went away in about 30 minutes. Wow. That's awesome. So that's available for people who are not squirmish about needles. <laughs> I'm totally squirmish if somebody else has them, but then I started taking growth hormone and it it's fine if I do it to myself. But yeah. she's right, though, uh, Brother Sage. I know like two or three other women that have that bump right there, and they're bigger than mine. It's gnarly, but they're older than me. And I'm like, oh, my God, I don't know how you handle it. Right, and you can't always, you can't always make a diagnosis or a judgment just by looking at it. I mean, you have to ask them. you got to go dig a little bit deeper into their history. If there was an accident, if they hurt themselves, if it's related to diet and, and inflammation. I mean, there's some other things other than just going – that looks like it's such and such. Yeah, these women are not healthy that I know that have it. Like, they are not healthy. Like, I eat organic for over 30 years, like probably 33 years strict. Like, I don't touch it. I will rather starve than eat something that's not organic. I really, really don't fuck around with that. Like, Good. I like your standards. I like your standards. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> people are going to start joining in on the call uh, in the next six minutes. Um, if there's anything you guys want to talk about before they jump on the call, now is our time to do that. I'm just really thankful. Beautiful. Well, we have a lot to be thankful for. And right now, the big, the big thing is, th this is Brian, the big thing we're thankful for is that we have our water and we discovered our water and we answered the call and we're still practicing it. Indira. Well, you know, I have a question for Shivani. How did she come to know about AUT? How what? How did you come to know? I actually Shilangu? heard about it like about 33 years ago. I heard about it and I kind of was interested in it. But then my other friend was like disgusted by it and she was like super spiritual. So I just like forgot about it. And then um, actually, I got to give credit to my friend who I follow, and I want to follow you, Indura, on Instagram, too. Really? I'm sure Brother Sage will hook that up, but my other friend, I would made this doctor friend that's, like, rejecting all the doctor stuff, and he's, like, doing, like, he clears the sky with his energy, clears the chemtrails, and he's, like, really and, and I like asked him I go is it okay if I'm sick because I was scared I thought because I was sick I'd be ingesting the illness and so it's my friend and he told me on Instagram it's an Instagram friend that kind of like supported my decision and I was like oh my god and yesterday I was just crying and I wrote him and I was like thank you so much like I like I owe you the world and yeah so Instagram friend that supported me in it. I had heard about it before, but I never really. So, Shivani, um, I'll do my best to connect you two. I don't know if Indira and VJ are doing social media right now. <clears throat> they're, oh. doing, they're doing life big time offline. So, uh, okay, that's better. <laughs> no, you, you, you have to tell Shivani about my mind mail. I, I'm surprised that she saw me on Instagram. I might have I posted didn't. your picture. I might have posted your picture. But Shivani Instagram, excuse me, hello. Uh, Mind mail <clears throat> is a idea whose time has come. And Dara has been sharing this idea. And basically, it's a form of telepathy and sending one thought to another mind through your mind. And the communication takes place and the person calls you. Yeah. Or jumps I'm on totally into that. Like, oh, all I'm my friends are like that. Being in, in theta wave means uh, three to seven cycle per second. That's where the most purity shows up in a being, you know. It's it's beyond like, uh, you know, the labels and people okay. saying, I'm this, I'm that, I'm, you know, the only one. No, 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 no. You have to go to the purest form of your own um, biomagnetism. And on uh, EEG machines, you can measure theta cycle, you know, it comes with a lot of meditation and purity, you have to really uh, figure out who you are, 
you know. And when you do that, my gosh, I'm getting 99.999 responses. Yay. Yeah. So that, that's a, a future communication. I think. Uh, we, oh, it's we, true. My friends and I are all like that too. Like yes. seriously, I was running my business like that. Yes. Do you tell us your experience of mind mail? Tell me. We got two more minutes before our call starts. Okay. So, so oh, when you are doing it with your friends. Oh, because like, um, like I believe we were all like from Hindus over here in Humboldt because we all grow weed and we all like made millions of dollars growing weed and um, everyone's like a god around here. And so every time someone would harvest, like I would know it before they called like I would just like it's so psychic around here all my friends are like they're like they're like gods for real and everyone it's like super psychic around here like it's thick and and recently oh my gosh I've been so psychic but yeah I would get like I would know what they would harvest psychically and so I would call it like every like all my business was like running on psychicness for like 25 years like seriously wow. like yeah and now it's like even more. Yeah, it's thick. It's thick where I live. It's like a bunch of gods. All right, God, God. <laughs> I lost all my money. I've been grinding poverty because I like went paralyzed. Ivani, so. Ivani let's <laughs> come you. back. Let's come back to the call. We are actually live now. <clears throat> We've got some of the most beautiful souls and outspoken urine therapy teachers around. Or happen to be, uh, you can see their faces right now. Some are in New York and some are in Colorado and some are in California. And um, we're looking forward to our guest speaker, Veda Austin, coming here uh, at some point this morning. Uh, she wrote the book, The Secret Intelligence of Water. And so, since we're all about the golden blood plasma water, here comes Natalie, because we're all about the water, <clears throat> we, keep, we keep manifesting people who are also all about the water and they may have reached us through various different directions over here on the far right here is dr vj gupta who spent his career as a university professor in the field of hydrology which is the science of water and here we are here comes veda and here we are water babies water brothers water sisters veda good timing I'm talking about how the intersections of water has brought us together. Uh, underneath me is Veda, who wrote the book. We're going to hear about her and her journey, uh, The uh, Secret Intelligence of Water. On the far right is Dr. Gupta, who I'm going to introduce you to. He's been in the field of hydrology and the science of water as a college professor in Colorado for 30 plus years. And we're all brought together because we got a call from our inner water that's been telling us, hey, Maybe this is what I have been looking for in terms of being self-healing and have their own personal pharmacy within us. So we're all connected because of water. Now, isn't that amazing? All right, everybody, take a breath. Let's get some going here. Can you, is this backwards or forwards? Forward. Forwards. All right, take a couple of breaths. Let's get started. And Darlene. Our naturopath from Canada has joined the call. McLean has joined us from California. Nally, uh, Veda, Natalie's got your picture. Oh, perfect. <laughs> I'll look right at that. Right behind your angel wings. <laughs> Elijah is coming in from New Jersey. Am I supposed to see anybody or just one person? We got, we're, we're sharing everybody's I'm face on the screen, awesome. except when the speakers. <laughs> You're still interested in that? Just text me. Uh, the topic you mute you yourself if there's any background uh, noise. And if you want to learn uh, Thank you. So when it's time to talk, we'll all give a talk. Did y'all bring something to drink for our communion? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is going to go down the hatch here in just a little bit. You never thought when you're in high school trying to figure your way out through all the personalities and egos and identities and crap they jam down your your mind that someday you'd be a pee drinker. <laughs> never would have dawned on you, had it. Hi, Natalie. Good morning. So let's jump right to communion. Why not? All right on. Darlene, did you bring a drink? 
Either that or take a cup and put it under the table. I don't care whatever it takes. I've got one here. <laughs> Pre-made. You can tell what I love about this, this water family is people have no inhibitions. We can talk about peeing in the bathtub. We can talk about collecting our pee in the car. We can talk about going on the airplane and being a spy in the bathroom, taking a bath, a shower. These guys are not shy about anything because we love you and we accept you just the way you are. So I hope you guys feel that same about me. Everybody's community embraces each other because we have a secret with ourselves. <laughs> but it's not going to be a secret for long. All right, hold your glass. We're going to say a prayer. It's called the Sacred Water Prayer. Uh, it's uh, listed in the Healing Water from Within book. And it's a call or response format. Do you guys understand what that means? Okay. That means we repeat it? I will, I will say a line, and then you will say a line. And we'll go through the entire prayer. And when it's all over, we're going to take a, a drink. Okay, this will be my very first age drinking. Because all I have is aged right here. With, Whoa, it's like... That's okay. Whatever you got, whatever you got. And sometime, one of these days, I'll give a talk on the truth about what aged or what I call evolving urine is all about. Yeah, please so, do. I, I will. To learn. After the communion. And I'm putting together urine therapy training classes. Got three students signed up if you want to take a training. It's a six weeks course. All right, here we go. Hey, oh, cool. you ready? Yes. Natalie, Natalie's going to rock it out. I take this water of life. I take this water, the water of, of life. life. I declare it the water of light. I declare it the water of light. water of light. You guys are the best. As I bring this water within this body. As I bring, bring this, this water, water within, within this, this body, body. It allows me to glow. It allows, it allows me, me to, glow. to glow. I take this water of light. I take, I take this, water this water of light. Of light. I declare it the water of God. I declare, I declare it the water, it the water of, of God. God. Or you could have said creator or love or whatever you want. I am the master of all I do and all that I am. I am the master, master of, all of all I do and all, and all that I am. Yeah. So be it. So be it. Let him te televise this on CNN. <laughs> That'd be a whole lot of fun. So, welcome to the call, everybody. I'm excited because we have a special guest today, and it's not just Veda who's our special guest. Everybody here is our special guest. So, we're going to do this a little differently. Usually, we give everybody a couple minutes to, uh, you know, introduce yourself, where you're from, what your journey's been all about, and a little bit of that. But we're going to do this a little different because this is Zoom call number twenty. Five. Can you actually think? I've been doing this 25 times. Wow. Yeah. So I want to start off by just saying a little bio about our special guest, Veda. Did you know I was going to say this, Veda? <laughs> it's very sweet. Well, you're living in the moment. So this is how we <laughs> this is how we roll, guys. All right. This is from our website, VedaAustin.com. This will be posted in the description section along with her link to her book and all her other groovy stuff. Here goes. Veda is a water researcher, public speaker, mother, artist, and author. Breathe, Veda. She has dedicated the last eight years observing and photographing the life of water. She believes that water is fluid intelligence, observing itself through every living organism on the planet and in the universe. Her primary area of focus is photographing water in its state of creation, the space between liquid and ice. It is through her remarkable crystallographic photos, photos I hope I said that word right, yeah. that water reveals its awareness of not only creation, but thought and intention through imagery. Or imagery. Yes. So it is my honor and joy to introduce our guest, Veda Austin. Take it away. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. And it's really a lovely kind of segue, actually, from considering that urine is actually such a high proportion of water, it's like 95% water and minerals. And so the two things that I've been most passionate about over the last eight and a half years of doing this work with water and studying water in many different types of ways is water itself 
is one absolute passion, but a lot of people don't know that salts and minerals are my other passion. And when salts and minerals and water come together, there is this beautiful synergy in marriage. And the other thing that's so interesting about them is that they are actually two immortals in the sense that water doesn't die. It's always go. it can be polluted, but it will always transform into one of its other stages. Whereas when you look at salt, essentially salts are crystals. And when salt enters into water, it becomes invisible, but you can still taste it. It becomes, the water and the salt become a liquid crystal. And they're able to store and hold vast amounts of information. Because if you think about what's in our technology, it's all crystal, crystals are storing huge amounts of information. Salt is a crystal. And when it's a liquid crystal, which is actually what the water inside of our body is, it is able to store and hold vast amounts of information. So uh, it was Natalie that invited me originally to share some of the work that I've done um, with urine because over the last eight and a half years, I've studied many bodily fluids alongside water and all different types of water. And so I always thought if any water is going to be informed, it's going to be the water within the body. And there have been, um, it's available to many people, even down to saliva. There are tests where you can actually spit onto a glass, piece of glass, and then let that dry, and then look under a magnifying glass. And if that yeah. saliva okay. forms um, kind of ferning, then a woman can tell if she's fertile. And if the ferning doesn't appear, it says that she isn't fertile. So I did a small study. I don't have a lot um, to show you, but what I do have, I think, is very valid and important. And a lot of people probably haven't seen their urine um, in a crystallographic manner. And so what I did was actually take my urine, as, as the example, um, because it's so available, and I froze it at different stages of my cycle to see whether or not you yourself would be able to share information about me as a woman. Um, and going forward, I actually did what you asked me um, as well earlier uh, when we spoke yesterday. And, um, and I, I see, went, wanted to see whether or not my consciousness would be able to influence the urine to form different structures. So I projected the feeling of joy into the urine, which I'd already photographed. I took a sample. I photographed it prior to projecting the feeling of joy, and I photographed it after projecting the feeling of joy. And I'm going to show that to you as well, as well as what urine, how water at the end in the, in the urine actually changed after having ozone therapy. So um, I'm assuming I can just, yep, great. Yeah. Share my screen here. So this is the introduction to my study. So this is what the beginning of my um, cycle looks like. So they vary in color um, based on, because I, I only use a very small amount of urine and I hold them up to the light. And so I have a very uh, specific kind of um, technique, which takes under five minutes. And it's and I teach this work as well, um, so it's it's a very very thin layer of um, of liquid in the dish, and where I hold it up to the light allows different colours to come through. So, um, so you can see that in the very early stages of my cycle, the urine performs in a very specific way. It has these kinds of like branching. This almost looks a little bit like fire. Um, it's very, very interesting. Very, what I, what's so curious and interesting about it, this one almost looks like seaweed, like a tree. So there is a sophistication within the very early stages of my cycle starting to develop. So then what you'll start to see is when I'm fertile, these incredible images appear. So these are very specific um, hexagonal shapes. And what I would say to you is that whenever I see hexagonal shapes in water, it means that the water has a healed 
because I often use, um, for example, I often use tap water as my control because tap water forms very disordered patterns. And you can tell if the water has healed. For example, you could put the water into a singing bowl and play it and then photograph the water afterwards. And you will see that it's had a dramatic change. And you can see that because the water has formed these hexagonal patterns. And so when I've become fertile or I've come into that kind of three day period of, of ovulation, you can see that the water is sharing this information. The urine is sharing the information um, of my, my, this, my personal state um, in this crystallography. And what's very interesting also about this is that when you photograph seawater, you will sometimes see patterns that look very, very similar to this. So it's almost as if, as a woman starts to become fertile, she becomes like the ocean. And you can start to see that there is this kind of um, transformation structurally that happens within this, this timing. And then as I come out of that cycle, <coughs> you can see that there is a different form and shape and look again. It's uh, these kind of long burn type of shapes Feathers. and yeah very similar looking to feathers um, and within the work that I do I have in it some I've kind of got into a very advanced stage of my work for anyone interested in what I do you can just go and look at my Instagram pages and, and stuff but I work on something what I call hydroglyphs this has been um, three and a half years of study whereby to get one hydroglyph, and this is very relative to what you're seeing in this image and in, this, in the image that we just saw in the fertile stage, to get one hydroglyph, which is essentially a symbol that, it, that water has created using its building blocks of ice as it freezes. I have to have used the same influence, for lack of a better word, at least 50 times and seen the same result the same symbol appear in the ice at least 50 times to know that I have one hydroglyph. For example, perhaps I use the word um, urine, for example, and I put uh, the petri dish of water on top of the word urine, take it off, freeze it for, a, for under five minutes. That's how short my technique is. It's a short-term crystallography. The water splits into two types of water, informed and uninformed water. The informed water will adhere to the bottom of the glass petri dish within a very few small amount of minutes. The uninformed water, or the water that didn't take on information, it simply stays liquid. And so I tip away the liquid and I photograph the crystallography of the architecture, the liquid crystal architecture that appears on the glass dish. And so that's what I have done to create these symbols or to... to basically record these symbols that water is creating and I know that I've got 31 hydroglyphs so I know what these symbols actually mean so there is a language of water oh, and, considering, and considering that we are by molecular count not by volume by molecular count we're 99% water and what that means is, and also then if you consider that 70% of the water on the surface of Earth, not including primary water, actually science tells us that it came from asteroids and, and meteorites, saying that that is an alien substance of which we know virtually nothing about, by which we are, by molecular count, 99% of. And in another term, it means that there are more water molecules in our body than there are stars in the Milky Way. When you consider the intelligence and the sophistication that we are as liquid systems of bodies of water, then the power within us is so untapped, is so we, we just don't recognize the power of the fluid body that we are. Peter, so, yes. Are you telling us that water came from uh, beyond Earth, from outer space? Yes, yes, it didn't originate. Originally, it came from meteorites and asteroids. Certainly, that's what science tells us. Was it a form it of water as we know it now, or was it particulates that formed water when it got here? It was like ice. And so then they were able to tell, scientists were, 
scientists were able to tell that this type of water, so they got this type of water from, from ice and melted it, and were able to actually see um, exactly how much, what's the word, um, it's a certain type of, it's just going out of my head, it'll come to me in a minute. Okay. Um, it's a component within water that some water has and some water doesn't, and it's just not coming to me. Um, DJ might know. No, oh, I know. I've written it down somewhere, but yeah. it's. Let me just see. I've written a whole book on these things, and sometimes when I haven't had a lot of sleep, I go blank on it. But what I might do is I'll search it up afterwards, and I'll just let you know. But essentially, it's um, it's a type. It's a special type of water that basically says how they measured how much of it was in the sample, and they could see that it measured exactly to the type of water that is on earth. And so they were able to say that it actually was the same water that came from asteroids that hit the earth. So they were essentially saying that they could, that was their reason and way of being able to say that it was the same water. So essentially that's what seeded the earth. And it's interesting because we, if you look around the world and you start seeing how there are different types of bodies, different bodies of water have different energies. Mm -hmm. And with, if water really did come from different meteorites and different asteroids, it would have different energy, it would have different information, it would have different kinds of um, minerals. It's something depleted water. If somebody, somebody who knows a lot about water would, uh, something depleted water. Can someone help me out? Um, Is VJ still around, Indira? I don't know, I, I love the voice. Yes. I am. You know what I'm talking about? Something depleted water. Deuterium. There we are. I knew it would come to me eventually. Deuterium depleted water. So they were able to, it's not depleted, but they checked for the amount of deuterium that was in the water from these asteroids. And they saw that it was the same amount of deuterium that is essentially in the kind of water that is on Earth. And that was their way of being able to, to say that. There is also a type of water called primary water, which is held in the ringwoodite in the Earth's mantle. And that's a whole other story of which I find fascinating. However, we will move on because I just really wanted to prove and say that the kind of water within us and the kind of water that we have to drink. I always say people, there's a lot of kind of talk around um, what water can do for us, but I always think much differently in that what was the last word that you spoke before you drank that water? What kind of environment are you inviting this water into? We are essentially an incredible, sophisticated vortexing filtration system, I'm which is and, um, and, and, and I always boil it down. You know, what essentially are living organisms? We are water, salts, and consciousness. And water and consciousness are always, for me, intertwined. If you look at my work, you'll see why I say that. Um, but this is, try, I'm trying to stick to urine here. So I, this was when I was actually very unwell. Um, I had, went through a, a period of having quite bad thyroiditis. I had swollen throat and I had a lot of stuff going on. And so you can see, even in my urine, it doesn't show a lot of um, texture you're not seeing very much in the way of patterns. But after I had IV ozone therapy, you can see that it's become more like a flower and it's starting to take on new form and shape and it's starting to, it's, it's definitely changed quite dramatically from being very kind of um, blank. It looks and like then, the dry desert. Yes. <laughs> and there it does. And this was actually when I was in New Zealand. So, um, but anyway, and so then this is urine that I took yesterday that was prior to any influence. So it, it, I'm not, I'm just kind of like in my in between stage at the moment. So I'm, I'm <laughs> neither fertile nor in the beginning or at the end. Um, but then I projected that feeling of joy into the water. And you can see that it's created what looks almost like a beautiful flower. And so it's really been able to shift and change. And that surprised, I guess nothing much surprises me anymore, working in the realms of water. 
but given that water, I mean, as urine is so much percentage of water, and that the other part is this beautiful minerals, essentially. <coughs> so for me to then visually see that um, urine can be influenced after it's come out of the body certainly mm -hmm. also suggests that our thoughts, our well-being, our, our environment, all of these different things, our inner environment definitely can change this image, the structures within us. Sorry, yes. Can the healing water protect our DNA or regenerate our DNA? That was yeah. a question from uh, Matt. Right. Well, I mean, our DNA, around the strands of our DNA, are all of this incredible layers of structured water. If we didn't have that kind of water around our DNA, our DNA would not coil. That's how mm. powerful and important the importance of water really is. Um, mm. And so... I believe that the, the, our well-being, the well of our being, just to put that into a watery term, the well of our being is so incredibly important that we need to be able to draw, draw up from the sacredness of this well and begin to, and, and that ties in with breath work. It ties in with the Kundalini. It ties in with everything rising up. Mm -hmm. And so as you begin to really work within yourself and really recognize that not just what you see in the mirror is this kind of skin we see, we see ourselves through our fourth phase water eyes because the lens of our eyes is 99% highly ordered structured water. Mm. Tears, I just want to mention this too. Tears, to me, when you think about water, the fluid that's in us is essentially kind of like um, an emotional, an, an, a fluid in motion. It's a fluid emotion. Mm -hmm. And so at our most joyful, when we're laughing around, tears coming out of our eyes, we're seeing that emotion in the fluid of our tears. When we're crying, when we're sad, we're seeing that emotion in the fluid of our tears the emotion becomes visible. And so then when you think about all of these different aspects of being this fluid emotional body and a very sacred one, I think just even if you just begin with a conscious awareness that we are fluid systems, then I think that everything begins to change within the body itself because we forget how 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 clever our body system is because we get so conditioned to be told what to think and this is the way biology works and this is this and this and this and this not to say that that's wrong in a very traditionally scientific sense however we are taught out I think of of really knowing who we are because I go into schools and I teach water science mixed with art projects I teach children how to do this work and I say to them, if your skin was invisible, if your organs were see-through, what would you look like? And they always come back to rivers and streams and tributaries and rain. And one boy mm -hmm. said to me, I think I would look like a brain-shaped cloud with electrical rain showering down and up through my body in the shape of a human. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> you're amazing. And so, advanced, those generations are more uh, uh, wiser than we give them credit. Absolutely. And so then I think, well, I mean, I'll just stop here. And then I, I think that if we start to recognize ourselves as bodies of intelligent water, and I think of water itself as the observer. When it's out, and the reason I say that, and I, I don't want to go over my time frame here. There's you've probably got lots of other speakers, and I can speak for hours, and I do on lots of podcasts, and I can get into all kinds of realms. So I don't Thank want you. to like hog we're, anybody's we're, time. <laughs> we're going to make room for everybody here, and I've got some questions to throw at anybody who's willing to answer them. But okay. what we would like to know is how you got on the urine therapy journey, and do you have uh, daily practices with the protocols that you care to share? Well, I, I'm a total virgin, to be honest, in this area, and it's very new to me. Um, and so it was um, our mutual friend that, that she came on my, um, on my workshop that I teach, 
uh, where I teach my technique and I teach people how to do this work that I do with water. And so she was asking me whether I'd be open to like sharing the work I've already done. And so the more I hear, and I'm like very new, but the more I hear and I saw somebody um, do a little talk on Instagram just yesterday for the first time and was actually using urine up their nose. Um, snorting it up their nose to help clear the passages and mm. when I actually think from the perspective of having worked with water and minerals for so long it it seems so um, so obvious my dad is Maori the native New Zealand Maori and so within the Maori history historical culture um, mm. there is this culture of having um, used urine therapy and they call mm -hmm. urine meme and so it's like a drinking of the urine to help their immune system and to what help do you call them. it what do they call it meme yeah th that's the word for urine it's interesting yeah. because in Botswana the the word for urine is you juice oh <laughs> and in referring what they're referring to is that is you juice me and you yeah that's you juice. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's so interesting um, yeah, so I mean, I'm. I always try to say that I should never say never, and that I should. And people, on the whole, should just stay open. And I take that for myself. So I'm very open to like exploring all kinds of things. So this included. So I am really supportive of everyone, everybody's doing here, because I think ultimately our body is the sacred body of water so whatever comes out of us especially if we're conscious about it I think that what I see within this group is there is a consciousness that is kind of like um, a collective consciousness and so it's interesting because I've I know um, Rupert Sheldrake and I've met him several times and we email and his idea about morphic resonance is that you know, that you get to this hundredth monkey thing where all of a sudden you start hearing about everybody's talking about this this thing. And so I believe that you've got to that because... Um, we have got to that. And yeah. as, as of three years ago, the count was 30 million people in 50 countries practicing auto-urine therapy. So yeah. we're, not even, we're not only at the tipping point, we're leaning into it and tipping <laughs> it over. This yeah. is so widely accepted. If you notice how many Telegram groups, Instagram groups, Facebook groups, Twitter groups, you might say there's a buzz going on about the water. By the way, I was going to say that when you were talking about the fluidity, it gives a whole other meaning to the term, I'm in the flow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's also, I love the term flowing, not forcing. Because yeah. it, yes. Indira, okay. then we're going to ask some questions. So go ahead. You're muted, darling. You're muted. I can't hear you, sorry. Indira, unmute yourself. Press the button. There you go. Yeah. Okay. I First of all, I want to uh, tell Veda, it's a beautiful, beautiful name you yeah. have. <laughs> Shukriya. Uh, secondly, you mentioned something in uh, connection to water and Kundalini. Yes. Now, I have a question that the cerebrospinal fluid mm -hmm. that is connected to the Kundalini medications or the idea of how the Ida, Pingla, and Shushmana. Mm -hmm. So, is there any connection with water and cerebrospinal fluid? Absolutely. Well, the, 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 that fluid is also water. And so, we're talking about energy moving. And so it's such a big area within this idea of Kundalini is also around um, movement and flow yes. and being open, opening up these kinds of dams sometimes that we create. And so there is a kind of the water pushes through this dam, the energy is pushing through the dam and is moving through and around the spine and up through into the sacred areas in the head and there is this kind of milking of the snakes as you were into this bowl and then you can get the amrit through into your mouth yes. and that amrit essentially is a very sacred water that is created through a spiritual process 
And that in itself has everything to do with water and everything to do. I mean, that's the, the, one of the many powers within the body is that when we start to recognize that we have the ability to make our rivers move and we have different tributaries and rivers and oceans within this body, I think. And when you start realizing you can make these rivers intertwine and move in the sacredness of like a um, of movement through energy, then I think as far as the, the cerebral fluid and the spinal fluid, all these things, they are sacred waters that have the ability, once you start to even recognize them. One of the studies that has been done, is, and I'm sure many of you have heard of Emoto's work, and I would encourage you to look at a man called Laurent Costa. He's a French photographer, does similar work, except that he doesn't like the idea that he's influencing water. He allows water to simply show him what it will, like a spiritual teacher. And I'm very much more of that mind. But the work that Emoto did, he did one where he had the water that was saturated the rice in, in three different tests. One that was given attention, positive attention, one that was yelled at, and one that was ignored. The one that was ignored was the worst of them all. So I think it's very sad when we ignore the water within our sacred body. And then actually, when we start to bring our attention to it, so I work with a lot of indigenous people, and one person said that she could speak to bees. And she said she watched the hive and she was staring at the hive for long periods of time and eventually a little bee came out and said, please, we don't mind you looking at us, we don't mind you looking at our hive, but could you please stop looking for so long because your consciousness is putting too much light into the hive. So when you then link, think about that, consciousness adds light into whatever you focus it on. Mm -hmm. So then if you look inside, you light up your whole body and you start to recognize that the sacred rivers within us want to move, that they are being damned. So I think that when you start moving them, even just through recognizing that they are true and real and there, then the energy that moves up through these sacred fluids actually get to get towards source because the one most beautiful thing that water teaches us is that if you look what it does naturally, it is always going back to source. So we are beautiful bodies of water, always going back to source. Yes. I could listen to you talk all day. This is fascinating stuff. <laughs> <clears throat> so the Shivambu devotees, which you see on the screen, I don't know if you call you guys devotees, but that's what I call you because you're in it to win it. You're in the lifestyle. You're not going to walk away. To me, it's the, it's the ultimate return to the sacred. Because you take this water, which is known as the water of Shiva. Shivambu literally means the water of Shiva or blood of the Lord. And in this case, we're talking about the golden blood plasma water. So as you take the water, you take from yourself, you return to yourself. And that information that the mind knows since birth, since being in, the in mom's belly, is that we have encoded the energy and the information of what perfect cells are. And so when you can give yourself a chance to bring that uh, information through the water back into your body, you have the best chance on the planet to regenerate your cells, get rid of the toxins, and restore uh, the functions and the well-being of your body. What a lot of people have been noticing, and I'd like to hear some feedback from you guys, is that when they're either doing urine fasting or drinking urine when they're on a fruit diet or a very light raw food diet, have noticed that their chemistry has changed, their cravings have changed, their addictions have fallen to the side. Um, VJ here got off smoking cigarettes because of urine therapy. <laughs> we had Eli, if he's still around. We've had people who got rid of pornography addiction, got rid of sex addiction, got rid of all kinds of things because of the restructuring of the chemistry in the body. Hmm. I'm gonna have to leave in a minute, but I, I wanna just talk a tiny bit about that and that because I, I work alongside, and he's a friend of mine called Dr. Gerald Pollack. He talks about the fourth phase of water. He is such an amazing and beautiful man. And he essentially, is, he wrote the book, The Fourth Phase of Water. There's a liquid, solid gas, and then a type of plasma or gel. It has more viscosity. It absorbs more light. It's slightly more alkaline. It's negatively charged, all these different kinds of things. 
our body is so sophisticated that it takes H2O and converts it into H3O2, which essentially has an extra hydrogen and extra oxygen atom. And that moves a fourth phase of water. It is the battery of our cells. And it helps, it absorbs, like I said, it absorbs more light. But when you look for fourth phase water, and this is critical when you're thinking about essentially these incredible, um, what our body is doing with this water. So when you look for it, and I've done this, I've been in the lab and seen them do it, and I've done it. So you, to find it, it's so cool. You basically get a little beaker of water and to see whether it has fourth phase water in it. Then you put something called microspheres in it, which are like these little invisible things that kind of make it a little thicker. So if, some, if the water is doing anything, you'll see them move. Then you put something called a um, nafion fear, sphere, um, nafion tube, sorry, which is like this little almost invisible tube. Then you look under a microscope, and if the fourth phase water is present, you will see that the water self-propels through the tube like a little battery. And essentially it isn't um, that nothing else is happening around it to give it this kind of propulsion, except that it excludes solates. So it pushes solates away from itself to create this very, very microscopic layer, which actually is like a battery. And it and energizes the cell and helps the cell to have, um, to be more productive, to be healthier, and to like that then helps the... Matt, Matt wants to ask a question. Our, our, he's our water teacher out there in New York. Hi, oh, Matt. I, I just want, hey, it's really cool to meet you. Hi, I didn't want to interrupt what you were just saying. I just wanted to piggyback off what you were just saying. So if you remember where you were, please continue. Oh, I was just talking about how sophisticated our body is to, con to do this conversion, but uh, also how that kind of water expands with um, infrared light. So infrared saunas are great. Like... Um, like walking barefoot on the ground gives that negative charge up through the body and so all of these things are, are wonderful but when so i'd love to hear what you have to to say i've read pollock's book i think i even remember the nanometer of infrared light that creates the uh, fourth phase structured water i think it's 670 or is it 672 mm -hmm. Uh, I've like got a book somewhere here. Yeah. <laughs> right. um, but that's in the sunlight, I believe. Um, but what I really wanted to say is, would you consider the structured water uh, in our cells, or sorry, in our vasculature, mm -hmm. to be in conjunction with the vasculature itself, the structured water layer on the inside of the vasculature, and the protonated water that's propelled through it because of the charge differential? Is that a free energy system? Yes. Yeah. yeah. We're a walking free energy system. We're, we're a walking free energy solar panel system. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we are. Tesla yeah. technology, do we? Yeah. Well, I think that's what so many of the ancients and greatest people that have ever lived around, that have taught us anything about free energy at all, have been also trying to tell us we are a free energy source. We are free and we are energy. Both things. And, and uh, the structured water is part of that mechanism that you described. I encourage everybody to look up how that's possible within every one of our veins. So what Beta and I were just describing. Yeah. Um, if you haven't worked with evolved um, or in Beta or uh, aged to a large degree, we find that it's very gel-like, which absolutely speaks to fourth phase gel water. To me, um, it seems to be the most hydrating, even more than fresh, probably because it's the gel water that we're made of and it just goes right into us. Uh, so uh, it's a pleasure to suggest something to you. <laughs> you're, you're so accomplished, it's very nice to meet you. Oh, it's a pleasure. And I mean, I'm happy to have met everybody here and I'm sorry I, I have to go, but thank you so Before much. Before you go, me. everybody, let's give Veda a big hug, cyber hug. Yay, Yay back at you. <laughs> Lots of love, guys. Much love to you. <laughs> Bye. All right, guys, we're going to ask a couple of questions from you and uh, keep going here on our call now. Uh, can anybody stay after 10, after 1130? If anybody needs to drop off at, at 1130, no problem. But if you want to keep going, let's keep going. Okay, here's a good question for you. When you speak to newbies about starting urine therapy and moving toward moving forward in the Shivambu lifestyle, 
do either find yourself trying to sell them on practicing auto urine therapy or you just let it come naturally? Anybody want to answer that question? When you're introducing it to you, do you feel like you're pushing it or are you just letting it naturally be uh, a gift that you're giving them? Uh, kind of pushing because they don't, they are not comfortable with it. And so I tell them, well, you've had sex, right? I don't know any virgins. So they're like, yeah. And I'm like, well, think about whoever it was, you know, you can purify your own body better and trust yourself and drink from yourself. And you know what I mean? It's better than their ex-boyfriend that was cheating on them with whoever, you know, <laughs> that's not very pure. You know, I give examples. Well, you know, you were with this guy that was like cheating on you and that's not very pure. You know, some selling and pushing kind of. Okay. Uh, I, know it's not really, I know it's not what I'm supposed to say. Uh, that's okay. Right. I'm going to rephrase it and go into a different question here. How do you teach newbies to make the eternal shift, which is a mental shift, for them to feel comfortable and confident and trust you to make the leap, despite their context that urine is a waste product and that you sound crazy for telling them and that you actually drink your pee and rub it on your body? So how do you get that shift across to newbies uh, when they're hearing of this from the first time? Darlene? Not meaning to pick on you, but love to hear from you. <laughs> no, uh, I just I just say, look at my skin. Look how clear my skin is. I, I you know, I put it on, on my skin all the time. They can take a look for themselves and see how, how clean and healthy my skin is. And, you know, I don't use, you know, commercial creams and all these products, you know, it's natural stem cells that go on, on the face. And then, then you get their attention because everybody, you know what I mean? If they're at a basic level, they're a little bit vain and they want to, you know what I mean? Look a little bit younger, a little bit brighter, but you know, a little bit stronger. Absolutely. And, um, you know, this is the way to do it. So planting those seeds. Yeah. So being, being an example really goes a long way because a lot of people, are paying attention to you. They look at like they looked under me for years under a microscope and they go, Sage, you don't age. I said, Well, practice urine therapy, you'll get there. <laughs> so here's a, here's Absolutely. another anybody else before I go, I got two more questions and then I'm gonna open it up to anybody. I haven't looked at myself as if I was a free energy unit um, with a lot of confidence, but that idea I had actually come across a while ago and I started to think that way. And just this call really helped affirm that. So I'm very thankful. Well, you're an energy being for sure. You and Indira can talk about biomagneticism anytime you want to. Um, here's here's oh, another. Indira, let me go into another question, then you can bring yeah. it up. Okay. What is your inspiration for teaching urine therapy? And most importantly, why are you so passionate about spreading the Shivambu message and education to the world? Natalie, you want to touch on that one? We haven't heard from you. Tell you why I'm passionate because I almost died. <laughs> I'm like coming back from death. Natalie, is your is your speaker on? My speaker, I just turned on. I was listening to my intuition, what to say, but I just want happy, thriving people on earth. And obviously the systems in place want miserable, unhealthy people because that's how they make money. And I refuse to be a part of that system. So I value being able to use what my own body provides to help keep me thriving and happy. And one observation I made over Thanksgiving that I wanted to just touch base with quick is I'm being, I've been vegan the last few years. So then as I see my urine, I see how clear it is and like not clear, but how, how well, I don't know how else to describe it, how clear it is. But then over Thanksgiving, I ate just a little bit of turkey because I'm not, just, because I did. And I noticed in my urine the next day that there was like little chunks floating in it. And so I'm wondering if anybody else sees that if you eat meat, if you see little chunks floating in your urine versus being vegan, there's no chunks. Does anybody else have any insights into that? I... Darlene, unmute yourself. Okay. In my study, I noticed that um, people that weren't vegan, um, their aged urine was more likely to mold and have things go wrong with it 
um, that, and that was just within two weeks period, then, you know, the cleaner you are, the cleaner it can stay pure and clean itself up faster. Very good. Yeah, it might be a good sign that you see stuff in it because it's like part of the cleaning process. But right. if it immediately after elimination, somebody brought this to my attention and I didn't have an answer. It looked like some kind of yeast, like immediately there was stuff in the, in the, so could that be yeast that's like part of a local issue with the, with the kidneys? I think it could be bacteria, it could be a number of things. And the, you know, the urine is trying to clean itself up, but it can only clean itself up at a certain speed unless, you know what I mean? It, you know, sometimes it can be, it can be quicker if you put old, and, and some aged urine attached to the new urine I find, but yeah. um, you know, if it can't quick clean itself up quick enough, then that's when it's going to mold and stuff like that. But but uh -huh. if it can clean itself up quick enough, then it's never going to mold. It's going to be infinite fermenting crystal bliss. <laughs> and maturing, as Monica calls it. Right, and maturing. Hi, thanks. Let's go to McLean. Good to hear. I, mean, I I don't know. I'm one of these people that I, my my diet is probably 99%, 5%, something vegan. And I eat meat. And my main, and my urine doesn't smell. I mean, it doesn't have, yes, it has an odor, but it doesn't have the kinds of smell that people, or the terrible taste. And I've been doing this, people know, for over 40 years. And um, there are not chunks. And my, my understanding and belief I'm willing to change is that it has to do with the chemicals in people's food. And I, I don't go, I go to a very few restaurants that use only organic. I happen to live in California, in Northern California. And so I have access to this. So I wonder if whatever is being fed animals and chem, you know, uh, shots and things like that that's different from what's being sprayed on on yeah. vegetables if that's what you're seeing in in urine that people have meat eat meat but I have to say that it's and I have tons of jars and I don't even keep cloth you know I keep a cheesecloth over most of them my urine tastes great and and my bathroom it, you know it doesn't have a, I'm repeating myself but I, I feel like it's the chemicals. It's mm -hmm, my experience. Could In everything, have... you know, your salt, your your pepper, everything. I mean, all I'm not, I'm not, I mean, my friends, someone just gave me something and I'm like, some food, some bread, some sweet thing, and I just laugh. I think I don't, I don't, you know, I don't vary from this. I don't stray from this. I have a commitment. You know me for anyway. Yeah, that's, that's what I think. Thank you. Uh, Natalie, did you want to add to that? I wanted to just add that the reason I even um, saw chunks in the urine is um, I'm a little fascinated by mixing my friend's urine and I's urine together. And I've done it with one of my girlfriends and one of my guy friends so far. But the picture in my screen, that is urine froze from my friend and I's urine together, frozen. Wow. You can see the hexagon picture. But when he gave me his urine, um, that's when I saw little chunks in his urine and none in mine. And so then I was like, Hmm, I just sat with that. Then at Thanksgiving, when I ate some of that Turkey, it made me look at my urine and I was like, Oh my God, the chunks are in there. And I was like, Oh my God, that's why the chunks were in his urine because he eats meat. And so it just, I don't know, brought more awareness into what I'm eating and what my urine looks like because of that. So. I like your chair. Yeah, well, it sounds like some research is being taken place here. We're finding out what happens to meat eaters. And I don't know, we don't know yet. I don't know if there's enough research to determine if it's a universal experience and reaction uh, in meat eaters urine or not. I have a comment. Yes, Shivani. I'm not a vegan or a vegetarian either because um, I was a vegetarian and a vegan for like 15 years. And I had a severe B12 B12 deficiency because I ate spirulina with every meal and spirulina is an analog for B12 and it blocks the B12 from absorbing in your body. And so I actually had to take B12 injections from a friend because I'm too scared of doctors and um, 
And I'd like, like when people talk about how great it is to be a vegan, it's like, yeah, it is great when you're coming off of McDonald's or whatever, but talk to me when you're done in 10 years, talk to me about how you feel, because all that bliss that you feel is like, kind of like B12 is protecting your nerve endings and all your nerve endings erode, like mine were eroding. And so I am so strict, like I won't touch food. I haven't touched an organic food. Giovanni, excuse me for just a second. Uh, Darlene has something to uh, contribute to this. I'm just saying I eat meat, but it has to be organic. It has to be like, you know. Right. And I'm not here to to judge anyone's lifestyle. I'm just saying if you are having trouble absorbing B12, it might be due to a digestive problem, not due to a lack of meat. There might have been some digestive I never thought I would eat meat again. People were like, I knew all these like really beautiful girls from Mount Shasta. And they were like, yeah, we were were vegans for 10 years. And we started eating meat. And I was like, (gasps) I was shocked. I was like, how could you do that? You know, like I never thought I would eat meat again, but, um, I'm my, I'm on keto. I don't eat any carbs. I like, I love, like, I don't, I'm not, it doesn't constipate. I go to the bathroom every single day, at least once, sometimes twice. I'm serious. Like if you're on, like, it's weird because if I eat carbs, I get constipated now. It's like whatever you're buying. And I'm so into food combining. Like I never eat my fruit Mm. any, you know? So it's like, my body is lean. It's like, you know, it's like a machine. It's like, I absorb my organic meat and I love it. And I wish, I mean, I, I always thought when I was older, I'd be a vegetarian or vegan again, but I did it for a bunch of fasting days for about five years recently. And Shivani, Shivani, can we, can we all agree that perhaps there's also something about us being energy and being an energetic uh, being and, and being a consciousness that has in our emotions has an effect on how well we digest, how well we relax, how well we assimilate, how much, how well our immune system is. Everything, all my food and all my drinks have to be like in the vibration of like, I'm very into that. Yes, I agree. Definitely. Well, the same thing is true. Uh, and the other side of that is the people who have been consuming Shivambu uh, for some time have noticed their emotions are now calmer than before. They notice that they're able to stay present and centered and for a lot of people sane. And so for me, uh, this is my uh, lifesaver. Having urine therapy in my toolkit is something I'm never going to be without. And if you really get to how important this is on the on the big picture, if you never have to worry about going hungry, de- getting dehydrated or thirsty, that unplugs you from the matrix that liberates you from any kind of need for an outside doctoring or an outside a fix an outside uh, supplementation as a matter of fact i sold supplements for 30 something years to health food stores i was a big speaker da 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 and then when i got in urine therapy i stopped taking supplements because it's given to you by your body and it's got a built-in alarm clock that tells you hey your medicine's ready time to take it and most supplements are bad too. I mean, I'm yeah, talking about. Real quick, I can say the only um, supplements I use aren't supplements. They are things that are moving things out of the way, so my body can produce its own, you know, energy and and recycle its own nutrients. Um, they're nutraceuticals that are just removing the bad stuff, and I just get so much energy from addition by subtraction. Um, which urine therapy is part of that for me. I mean, I'm recycling my own stuff, so I have I can put less in. But just addition by subtraction has been a powerful phrase for me. Yeah, that makes sense. That's what I'm doing. All right, last question, and then we're going to leave it open to everybody. And if everybody gets a couple of minutes on this question, if you feel like doing it, uh, that would be great. Here's the last question. How has the urine therapy lifestyle and practice changed your health, your state of mind, your energy, and the quality of your life? I'll repeat that. And then anybody who wants to take that, please, uh, you know, speak up. How has the urine therapy lifestyle and practice changed your health, your state of mind, your energy, and the quality of your life? Matt, you want to throw sure, a few comments know. on that? I tried all these diets, and yeah, some were certainly better than others, but then they would be good for a while and then not be so good, and it was super, super confusing. And uh, I can feel that a, a major missing component that helped me find my equilibrium with my diets was hydration. 
uh, and um, urine therapy does that better than any, any but probably because the structured water and the organic minerals, I believe in this inorganic versus inorganic minerals, something that's on my mind. Uh, so it got me off the diet wheel. All right, Makui, do you want to introduce yourself? You just joined us near the end of the call, but I'd love to know who you are since you're part of our water family. Maybe he doesn't want to. Bridget or Susie Du, would you like to unmute yourself and say hi? Brian, Elliot, the, the happy face symbol at the bottom there. Hi, Bridget. Is she going to talk to us? Hi, everyone. I'm from South Africa. Welcome. Glad you made it. Thank you. I don't know if you can hear me clearly. Just fine. Great, because our internet is up and down here. So tell us uh, about your urine therapy journey, Bridget. Sure. In the 90s, I heard about it and tried it for a good, oh, I can't remember exactly, but it was for several months. Um, <clears throat> I had a lot of things going on in my life at the time, which is why I didn't continue with it. And then about two months ago, I heard Dr. Group, Edward Group, speak about it again. So I've started uh, my practice again every day. And I have noticed a few very subtle changes. Um, for one, I'm sleeping a lot better and sleeping less. Uh, waking up feeling quite refreshed and ready to face the day. So that's been a big one for me. I also have noticed that I feel very centered and calmer, a lot calmer. Um, I have been doing a lot of grounding and lying in the sun for vitamin D and occasionally I do sun gazing. Um, and I've always enjoyed those grounding practices, but I found that the urine therapy has actually made a big difference in terms of how much calmer I feel and much more grounded and centered. Um, just my general demeanor has stuff right here. Oh, very, very zen. <laughs> Bridget, are you still with us? She was having Wi-Fi issues. Oh. So as you can tell, we have uh, stretched our audience uh, around the world again. Uh, a couple times we have the folks from Botswana in Nigeria. Dr. Boonmi, Santama, Osintosi. I've been trying to get uh, Reverend Sunday uh, from, uh, I think he's from Kenya. He might be from Nigeria. So it's great to have our brothers and sisters join us from Africa. Sorry, I was kicked off there, so I missed all of that, but I'll catch up on the replay. My apologies. It's, our internet is not great here at this time of evening. Um, is there many people where you live that are practicing urine therapy? Yeah, it's an in and out network. You can kind of tell. All right, guys. Um, any last comments, feedback, or anything you'd like to say to our viewers? Now, when this is all done, make sure you send me your links uh, to your website, to your social media page, or anything you want to be put into the description box once I publish this and put it on YouTube. And then it's going to be published on YouTube, and then the link's going to go where it's going to go. So last... Okay. Last heartfelt message you'd you like to give to our viewers. Anybody on the screen, speak up. Oh, I answer your other question just now is that I've Thank been you. like her sleeping way better and it eliminated all my pain. Like um I had tremendous pain. I don't know if I was poisoned or what, but my kidneys were screwed up and I was um or I had gout or I had kidney disease, it's all the same thing or whatever. But anyway, it just like killed all my pain and I could sleep and, and my circadian rhythm got back and everything is wonderful. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So guys, um, Matt, go ahead. Oh, um, somebody else had their hand up. Well, Bridget was uh, wanting to stay in, in communication with us, so I asked her for her email. Mr. Gupta? No, that was for Bridget. Did you have anything to say to VJ before uh, we go? I just saw his hand. VJ, would you like to share some words of wisdom from a water master of <laughs> all those years? 
Well, I am saying that uh, urine therapy is really amazing. And even though I have not done any research, this is the best medicine for COVID-19. But does anybody know about this? Um, well, there's a whole line of uh, thinking that there is no such thing as an independently malicious uh, virus or germ, that what we see as viruses and germs are fragments of DNA found in decaying tissue that can be projected throughout the body and outside the body, um, which is part of a poisoning and detoxification and adaptation to poisoning cycle. That is all to do with simply poisoning and detox and not with an independently malicious virus. Um, and what I tried to make clear is there is such thing as transmission, apparently, although we're not sure how it happens. And there is such thing as like exosomes or, you know, junk effluencing from a poisoned body. Um, but that doesn't mean that there's something called a virus or a germ that we should be afraid of. If we take care of ourselves, um, we don't need to detox is, is the repeated experience over and over and over again. Um, but terrain theory, uh, there's a movie co coming out in February, 2022, two's all around called Terrain by Dr. Andrew Kaufman. Um, Veda Austin talks with uh, Dr. Tom Cowan a lot and Tom Cowan and Mr. Kaufman work together very closely to talk to people about terrain theory as opposed to germ theory. So this is quite a robust field and. I hope that gives viewers some uh, vocab to look into it further. Nice, good work. Let's get let's get Tom Cowan on this call. Yeah, he yeah. talks about Veda all the time. Just saying, he does. Well, these guys have a lot of similar interests and a lot of similar studying. So yeah, I can see why they're uh, um, acknowledging each other as much as they do. Yeah, it's a small water family. Yeah, yeah. And this water family keeps growing in leaps and bounds. I don't know if you've been paying attention, but um, our water family in the Shivambu hut has increased a lot. We're up to 482 members, 400 and, 420 something members. Uh, the water family directory just added a new teacher. Uh, we had a new one from California. We have our first teacher from Mississippi. She just showed up. So more and more people for reaching out to me are willing to be made available to anybody who's looking for a urine therapy teacher or, or therapist somewhere near them on the planet. So it's been exciting to watch that grow. Um, I will be teaching classes coming up. Uh, one of the things I'm working on right now with my virtual assistant in, um, in India is the revision of this metaphysical classic called The Secrets of Youthing by Leonard Orr. And he lays out his experience of Shivambu. He, he has the entire Demar Tantra listed in here. He talks about physical immortality. He talks about healing, senility, as well as infancy, consciousness. And that's whenever you, you regress backwards and feel helpless. And you can't figure out. This is what happens to seniors when they get into senility. They lose control of their bladder. They, they shit on themselves. And they're helpless. They rely on the, the, the staff over at the, at the nursing home. Well, that's being healed. And this book talks about how Leonard went through it. And he held senility, and now he's a graduate. And it's a lovely book. Yes, Indira. Uh, you know, I think Daniel is on. And no, I was wondering, uh, is he working on the Christian uh, contributions about uh, the cistern and all kinds of references? I'll, I'll have to ask him. I wanted to write a book called Urine Therapy for Christians. Yes. <laughs> So that'll be a lot. I, know, baby. <laughs> I think they need it. They need it. The Jews need it. The Catholics, need it. the Mormon, yeah, they all could use some of it. I think it's time to go there in the middle of the night and change out their holy water at the front door to urine. And so everybody walks in and they don't realize they're feeling better. And it's not just tap water that's been blessed. So, one more thing. We, yeah. a few, um, uh, world conference before we were saying that we are going to put aside maybe one or two minutes and go horizontal with the whole uh, planet and, and the universe. 
to increase people becoming more receptive, maybe more needing it, they nothing else works, so they want to you know give it a try. That kind of energy will open up many, many people. So when we are thinking like that, the the thought also has domino effect. So the, the just try it vibe. What what? Uh, the just try it vibration. Yes. Yeah. Just, just think a couple of minutes. That's a good idea. And it will have a domino effect. I'm I'm damn sure. <laughs> 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 well, wonderful. Uh, with our Shivamba organization, we've been doing things like we've got a petition that's circulating around. And thanks yeah. to the inspiration of uh, Indira, uh, what we want to do is take the petition with a whole lot of signatures to major authorities around the planet, from governors in India, I mean, excuse me, presidents and prime ministers and heads of state, heads of uh, health systems, naturopaths, all kinds of different places, so they can get behind it and give their blessings to more and more people. Every, every initiative, every uh, addition of how we are going to go horizontal with it is welcome. People can think about it, what their ideas are. But put aside a minute or two every day at a certain time, it really is very, very effective, in my opinion. And this is what I have been doing. That's a good idea. Yes, thank you. Yeah, it is. And Indira teaches um, the concept of mind force. She says, uh, Brother Sage has been able to reach so many people uh, across the planet. All kinds of things have been happening, coming through me. You guys haven't seen nothing yet. Uh, because of a strong force, force of what do you call it? Mind force? Yeah, thought force. Thought force. That's right up there with pure intention. Yes. Yeah. You have to put that thought, you know, that I want to make this uh, 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 like a uh, household thing. Common word. Yeah. See, that, that will take some time. But, you know, that is the level we need to go. I Not that everybody that. is doing it. It should be a household work, household word, and people should get that message. Mm. So eventually we'll get to the point where we can talk to people and say, hey, I drink my pee, doesn't everybody? <laughs> Darlene, go ahead. <laughs> Well, if you look at the research of Lynn McTaggart, uh, she uses the power of eight, and she has found that when people meditate together over a certain subject, it exponentially goes out into uh, the universe and the world and has an exponential effect um, with people. So I think that is, um, you know, similar to what you're saying, you know, of, of getting together and, and putting that, that love and light and yearn out there. <laughs> In, in, you know, purity of intention. Why you want to do? Because I like to go to the core of the problem, okay? Or core of everything. So Shivambu is core of all the related things. Same way, why we have this global stuff going on, global warming, and we have cut down many, many, many trees over the, you know, decades and, and centuries. Same way, the loving of the cow, you know, is, is going back to, I was doing some research. If you really look at Kam Denu, uh, I think it is spelled K-A-M-A-B-H-E-N-U. It goes beyond, it goes beyond all this stuff about cows. How cow was given in the Puranas the old, old scriptural things. And it is mind boggling that cows are, how they, they are looked at and how sacred that animal is. You have to look at it, what the, the sages and the saints and the seers and the siddhas put this in information in the cow, mm. you know, there's and, you know, there are evidences. There are evidences. They are having paintings and all kinds of information. And as an Indian, I was just taken by what is available in the scriptural writings thousands of years ago. So please, I'm done. 
Matt? I'm sorry. Uh, they're sensitive to electromagnetism. The cows. The, the cows. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I've heard like they're often standing in the same direction in a field. Yeah, I mean, they, they are a, a kind of a, a whole thing about the information. Every part of the cow has some information, you know? And, and I think that you can do your own research about it to really go back to why cow was sacred thousands of years ago, you know? And uh, people are telling me about, uh, you know, oh, India used to be beef eating country thousand years ago. Well, we had the Mughals who came from Persia and they introduced this. Well, the Brits came and they uh, demolished, demolished uh, uh, cows, you know, they <laughs> burned 20, 10, 20 million cows in India because it was a source of the cows were kind of part of the integration of agriculture. You were know? they trying it, to separate people from their spiritual practice and their traditions? Well, not really, but they, they did not know all this information. Oh. You know, maybe they were just interested in introducing not to use the cow dung and uh, panchakavyam. Uh, they wanted to introduce these fertilizers to India, you know, chemical fertilizers. So they yeah. killed all the cows. That's the same thing that happened to America when they tried to get us on petrochemicals and petrofuels. And we could have gotten cosmic free energy. Uh, Darlene. There is a guy on YouTube, I can't remember his name, but he's using urine to fertilize his garden. And he does an eight, eight to one combination of one part urine to eight parts water. Um, so it doesn't burn the, the crops, but as a fertilizer. Yes, uh, it, you know, he collects it, all the urine in the house and, and transforms it into fertilizer for his large garden. Is he in Hawaii by any chance? I don't believe so. Okay, so it's not Nick Caputo. No, it's not Nick. I know for sure it's not Nick. It's an older guy. Okay, and Derek? Okay. Thinking about the cow urine, there is a decoction that they make in India. Five uh, aspects of all the things. So they use cow urine, cow dung, the um, uh, yogurt, and some jaggery, you know, like a sweet thing, Sugar, yeah. and the ghee. They combine this and make a decoction. And it works as a fertilizer, it works as a pesticide, a herbicide, everything. And, and it is a revival of that system. And there is a university that we are working with in Tamil Nadu, in, in Coimbatore. They, they make this in the laboratory and give it out to the, the farmers and things like that. And it is called punch cavium, means punch means five, and cavium is the, is the combinations. So look into this, and it will, you can do your gardens, or you can do your plants, you can do many, many things with your own urine or cow urine and things like that. Excellent, excellent. So I'm gonna close out the call now. Yes. Um, uh, I do love and appreciate each and every one of you for all kinds of different reasons. And I'm so glad you're in this family and that you're not silent about sharing it with people. So you're definitely uh, extraordinary souls. And I wanna thank you all and let's stay in touch because there's a lot more uh, that's happening in this movement and happening with the Shivambo group in Colorado. And there's a lot we can do together. You really reminded me of uh, Krishna and the gopis and the cows today. Um, and dear, thank you for that. You are most welcome. And you are a blessed soul, just like everybody is, you know, but Brother Sage, I have observed him in last 25 years. He has a lot of thought force, you know. That's what we have to harvest, you know. So I have some ideas. <laughs> we we do a sacred cow came what? from the ocean. This cow medu, the sacred cow came from the stirring of the ocean when all the divas stirred the ocean. Yes. And they had to get Lord Shiva's help. At you the end, you they stirred the, up the farm. And, God is you, know. and you can get so much of information and this is not people are not just writing it they have lived with that kind of knowledge thousands of years ago you know so anyway thank Love you it. very much and let's work together 
with a very, very, very strong thought force. Mind. I love that idea. Thank you. And we'll all meet in the golden water. <laughs> yes. All right, okay. guys. Okay, okay. Bye. bye. Namaste. Thanks for getting it posted. Bye. Aloha. All the best. Thank you.